Hey, somebody's going to mail my letter to the North Pole. You already have? Excellent. Good morning, afternoon, or evening. You are listening to the Professional Noticer. Here you and I will use common sense and all the wisdom we can muster to move beyond what is true and go all the way to the truth. With actual listeners in more than 100 countries, I am the professional noticer. Hello, everyone. I'm Andy Andrews. Hey, thank you for making me a part of your week. My purpose here today and with every show we do is to play the part of a best friend or coach. I want to help you live the life of your wildest dreams by giving you access to some of the greatest mentors, people the world has to offer today. Our sponsor this week is Tucker ATV. Highway 43 North in Jackson, Alabama. This is a small town business with a national reputation. Literally people from, uh, it's like 15 or 16 states now are buying their Polaris vehicles, their Echo Power Tools, their Hustler lawn equipment from Shannon and Lisa Tucker in Jackson, Alabama. The, the service is beyond belief, which is why people from all over are, are doing business with Tucker ATV. And you gotta see the place. You just really have to see the place. It is a destination in itself. There's taxidermy in there, there's antiques in there. There's, and, but most of all, you have the Tuckers. Shannon and Lisa are the, just the most awesome people. Uh, go on their their Facebook page. Read some of the stuff Lisa writes, and this is a, this is the kind of family that you want to be a part of and you want to be around. This is Tucker ATV Highway 43 North in Jackson, Alabama, the small town business with the national reputation. Observations and answers. That's what we do here on the Professional Noticer. Uh, we have today what I think is going to be one of your favorite episodes ever. It's going to be double the fun. And we have double the people on here, double the guests. We have two guests instead of one. These are people who passed in the night one time and met and created something spectacular. Ladies and gentlemen, for Christmas... We have that harmonica player that you can hear in the background, Buddy Green. We have Mark Lowry. And in case you have been in a cave somewhere for the past number of years, they came together and wrote a Christmas song that has become... I mean, I mean, how hard would it be to write a song today that would break into the world of Christmas carols hard, and be so a hard. classic? Hard, hard, and hard, hard, hard. The name of the song is Mary Did You Know. So Mark Lowry and Buddy Green. Mark wrote the words, Buddy wrote the music. Welcome to the show, guys. Hey, man, how are you? Andy, good to be with you. Well, Buddy, you and I are both better than Mark, who has a broken leg. I know, that's right. Oh, uh, and, and the, what, you know what's pitiful is I've broken it twice the same way. On the motorcycle, on the same street. On the same street, just two different people. You know, yeah. uh, the first one flew out in front of me, and I slammed in. I didn't slam into them. I, I hit the right brake, which makes you go face first into the street, which I didn't know at the time. And then, <laughs> now this time, okay, I see the guy coming across the lane. He's not. He has run his stop sign. Evidently, he thought it was a suggestion. And he's right. And I have two options go and try to go in front of him where I know he will hit me, but he isn't going that fast or hit at his door. But I remember, you know what I remembered? Hit both brakes. I was, and I was hitting them hard because I was swerving, but I wasn't going down. So I had both brakes, the front and the back. And instead of hitting it, I went in the front and he crunched into me and he broke three places in my shin bone. Have you ever been oh. in the shin? Well, it oh. broke in three places. Oh, oh, oh. Let that settle in. Oh. Bro <laughs> oh. Rufus, have you ever broke a leg? I've never broken a major bone. Really? No, I never have. Just, <laughs> you know, Polly said, because I, I told her, I said, I'm talking with, with Buddy and Mark today, and she said, well, just tell Mark that when he gets well, he has a speech coming, and she's going to give you her motorcycle speech. 
Well, it will fall on receptive ears because all scooters were sold. I had four. <laughs> and immediately they were sold to someone I don't really care for. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you don't want to sell them to a friend, but I did sell them to a friend in Dallas. But, you know, I won't probably hear about it when it when he crashes. But uh, no, if you live in Houston and you own a scooter, somebody's going to hit you. I, you know, I, I don't think it's just Houston. Maybe it's just me, but I don't think it's just Houston. Well, it could be. I think you need to be out in the country. I have so many stories. Well, even in the country, I mean, you can hit a piece of loose gravel and. Well, yeah, I know. You know, I, know. I mean, it's great. Anyway, I, I'm happy to be here. Merry Christmas, you two. Merry I'm wearing my, my Christmas shirt here with Santa Claus and poinsettias. And, and I, I have uh, long been proud of both of you and long oh. been just a great. You know, I, I'm like a fan friend. I, I listen to, you know, to you guys every day. I mean, uh, Buddy, I listen to early in the morning, almost every single day. I listen to some of your music and, and you know, Mark, I'm constantly pulling you up on YouTube and oh. listen to you act ridiculous. And, act and so, pull. yeah, as, but, but you guys have a history together that, I think is incredibly interesting and I think will interest everybody listening and watching. And that is you guys came together. So, so Mark, tell me your side of it. And then I want to hear what Buddy was thinking, because, Mark, you wrote the words, the lyrics to Mary, Did You Know? Well, in 1984, I wrote the lyric, you know. Uh, my pastor called, said, will you write the Living Christmas Tree program? And I said, okay. And part of that program was a monologue on, I wonder what Mary knew. I wonder if she realized that little baby. Of course, we know what the angel told her, but, you know, the angel didn't tell her, would he walk on water? Would, you know, all that kind of stuff. Right, right, right. And so I wrote it kind of like from the idea from the manger, right? Now, the big angels already showed up and made his proclamation. Well, I'm the little hyperactive angel who shows up right after that, who is out of his ever loving mind because he knows the beginning from the end. The father's took clued him in on what's happening and sure. he can't believe this 13 year. I'm getting chills right now, actually thinking about it, but he, <laughs> he is a little angel. It was just me as an angel saying, do you realize who is in your lap? Not as if she didn't, but as, oh my God my God is in your lap, right? Jehovah in an eight pound bundle is resting, is nursing at your breast. Mary, you're going to get to teach the word of God to talk. <laughs> that, you're going to is... get to teach Jehovah how to walk. You're changing God's diapers. And you know what? The, the whole thing is it, I have a lot of questions for Mary. The only ones that made the song were the ones that rhymed. Right. Cause I, but I really wish you to put the diaper part in there. I mean, I couldn't make it rhyme. Yeah. Diaper, a uh, wiper, that kind of Piper, thing. Yeah. It's yeah. tough. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, but so to make a longer story shorter is I was on the bus the way I remember it. Now, I, I think Buddy will remember it close to this, but I wrote the lyric yeah. out. And at the top of it, I said, Dear Buddy, here is a lyric I wrote a few years ago. Please put some music to it and make it a, you know, a major hit or something like that. In the clutches of the cross, Mark Lowry. You know? And then I wrote, Mary, did you know that your baby boy will one day walk on water? Just wrote everything out word for word handed it to him. And I, and, and I think he saw that thing I said at the top and thought, Oh, well, this is going to be a silly song, which right. would make sense. she would think that I would think that, you know, and, uh, then I didn't think any more about it. I've given it to a lot of people. Babby Mason tried to write it. Lynn Kiesecker tried to write it. Paul Johnson tried to write it. All of them. I gave it to him, said, let me know when you have it. And some of them never even called back. You yeah, know. all of all of them have since jumped off a cliff. No, 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 no. <laughs> but um, so you gave so, it to Buddy. So I gave it to Buddy, and then uh, he calls me. I think on Monday, 
after the Gaither weekend or shortly thereafter and uh, sang it to me. Okay, stop, stop, stop. All right, go to Buddy. Before, before Buddy sang it to you, Buddy, what did you think? So Mark hands you this piece of paper. Tell me what you're thinking. It was, the, I did think it was probably, you know, a novelty song. You know, I'd heard some of Mark's writing and what I'd heard had been funny stuff. And with that little note was, you know. It, that like, was funny, yeah. And I just said, hey, I'm going to put this in my bag. I'll, I'll look at it when I get home. And I remember Mark saying, well, don't lose it. It's good, you know. <laughs> so, I just, <laughs> But actually, I think about four or five days went by before I discovered it again. You know, I came home and dumped all my stuff out. And, and I remember one evening, um, you know, it was after dinner and I went into the end of my office and I've been playing guitar all day that day. I just, which was kind of rare back then. I didn't, I didn't have a lot of time to spend playing my guitar, but that day I had been playing a lot and in mostly in minor modes. Really? So I in a sort of a minor melody frame of mind. And when I picked up his lyric and read it really for the first time, you know, I was struck by it, thought, man, this is, this really is good. And then I just went straight to that phrase that he repeats over and over, Mary, did you know? And so that, that, that little bit of the melody popped in my head immediately. And I said, well, that's okay. I'll run with that, you know? And, and then, it just it really just about wrote itself um if you get a if you get a, a good idea you can just sort of chase it and it um and especially if, if the prime if the pump is already primed which it was for me so it was like a very easy thing to get started and probably within about 10 or 15 minutes i was calling mark because i was liking it and if he didn't like it i was re- i was going to slam the brakes on it i didn't want to get too attached to it right so i played him over the phone and I heard him just shouting on the other end of the phone going, that's it. That's it. And I said, well, let me work on it. I'll tweak it. And uh, Mark was living in Atlanta at the time. And, but he, he was going to be in Nashville within the next day or two. And so within a day or two, I was at his hotel room. We had a boom box and made a little, you remember this, Mark, we just made a little cassette recording. Yeah. Okay. So, so Mark, when you, when Buddy, sang it, sang it a little bit over the telephone. What, what were you thinking? Well, evidently, I because I did, I don't remember saying, that's it, that's it, but I can imagine. Because I'd heard, I still can sing for you Babby Mason's version. She wrote a melody. And, uh, and that wasn't I, it. Huh? it. And it that, wasn't bad. It isn't bad. It's actually a good melody, but it did not make me hear from home. Gotcha. It didn't make my heart soar and my, you know, I just know when I'm hearing from home, I know my father's voice. I, that's all I can tell you. And, and, and the lyric and the melody must marry. They really do. I mean, I know, I know at least one great lyric right off the top of my head that I think was ruined because the melody doesn't measure up. And I'll tell you privately what song that is, but I won't tell you here because it might hurt someone's feelings. I guess. But okay. it was a, a great lyric that never saw what it should have seen uh, because the melody is okay. So you knew but Buddy Green had that minor thing. Oh, how many songs do you know? Christmas songs are written in the minor key. Right. God, yeah. God rest ye merry, we three kings of old. Uh, I mean, Pat-a-pan. all of them. Huh? Pat a pan. Pat a pan. Yeah, pat a pan. Yeah. Really, there are there are a lot of uh, minor songs, and probably those are my favorite carols, the ones that have those minor melodies, because they do make you stop. A minor melody will will arrest your attention probably quicker than anything else to think, it, okay, this is something serious. I need to listen, you know. <clears throat> and that's what he had written. I mean, that was a – and I loved the fact that he was sort of um, – you know, playing off of that verse in the in the in the Luke story that you know Mary pondered all these things in her heart, and um, and it was to me it was just a wonderful crafting of that, and I loved the questions that he asked and and the things the the way it all pointed to Christ and gave a just a little snapshot of the life that Jesus was going to lead, 
And then the implications of that, I, I was telling the other day, I love the way he, he summed it up in that last verse. Um, did you know that you're, that, uh, this baby boy is the Lord of all creation. He will one day rule the nations. This, you know, that it, then it becomes, you're seeing the cosmic Christ. You're seeing the, I mean, the, what, not only the, the miracles he's going to do as he walks this earth, but how he's going to sum it all up one day. Right. How he's going to rule this, this universe that's going to be made new in him. Yes. I just, there was just so much, um, so much good theology coming into that song. <laughs> I used to tell my, some of my audiences that the first thing I thought when I read that lyric is that, oh my goodness, this must be stolen. Good Mark. <laughs> 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 Well, thank God I can prove it wasn't. <laughs> Mark, how long how long did did it take you to write that? I mean, not I mean, it, it could have taken years and it would have been worth it, but I, I don't I think it know, did not. I wish I knew because it seems like it was you know I had it and it was pretty much finished and uh and I might have and then change a word here and there because I had it between eighty four and ninety one. That's how long nineteen eighty four. To 1991, and I had it finished for you know it was finished quickly in '84. You know and, what? But I, it wasn't I, complete. I, See, I thought it was just a poem. I sent it out as my Christmas card one year. Really? Because and then I thought maybe this could be a song, and then I started you know pushing it to uh, different people that I thought did good compositions, you know. You know, I think that's I think that's very interesting. Eighty four to ninety one. I'm sitting here in Wisdom Harbor Studio, and I'm looking right over this way, and I have framed up on the wall for people to come in and see. And people are in here seeing it. Um, I have framed two rejection letters for Traveler's Gift, and you know, Traveler's Gift is the book that I've written that is sold more than any other that I've written. And it was turned down, uh, you know, 51 times, 51 different mm -hmm. publishers rejected it. And so it's curious to me, 84 to 91, you know, you tried different people. And I, I suspect, I hate this, but I suspect that the world's greatest music, the world's greatest lyrics, the world's greatest books will end up, uh, in somebody's drawer somewhere because somebody said that, nah, you know, that's not working or that's not very good. And they just kind of quit on it. Thank God you did not quit on what you well, thought I was a poem. <clears throat> but you know, I loved all my children, every lyric I've ever written. I've loved them all, but buddy, <laughs> I kid buddy. Cause he, neither one of us have ever done anything like that again. I mean, <laughs> that song, you know, if Gloria Gaither had written it, it would just be one of many. But God let an idiot and a harmonica player write this one. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Hey, hey, how many, do you guys have any idea how many people have recorded this song now? No. Um, I mean, there's scads of major artists now that have recorded it. Right. But I remember at one time Mark telling me, this was years ago, but Mark told me at one time there were 250 different choices you could make on iTunes. Well, on iTunes, song. when you used to, I don't know if you can still do this. I haven't done it in years, but there were 400. Because, you really? know, anybody can put their song on iTunes. You don't have sure. to have a major contract. And I love that. I love that. But there were over 400, and then it stopped. It stopped at 400. Well, that but was just because know. they stopped rank. It's they stopped counting them because the, the, way more than that have recorded that song now. Well, yeah, there's. I mean, there's all there's all these great choral versions of it, and uh, there's all these great. It's been translated into you know a dozen more languages or whatever. I mean, people have sent me versions of this song from. Russia and from the Middle East. I mean, there's all these versions of this song, and some of them are really well produced for that for that culture and for that. And there's a disco version. Is there yeah. really? There really is. There's a heavy metal version. Is there? The, yeah. I mean, and it's it's like what you. It's like, Mary, did you know? 
<laughs> you know, it's like that. <laughs> well, let me tell you, the disco version, a friend of mine called me one night from the disco. He said, Mark, your song is playing at the disco. And he held up the microphone. He's dancing. And was, Mary, did you? Mary, did you? Mary, did you know? You're... And she enunciated every word. And I thought, thank God. God, I don't have to leave the house. <laughs> that is unreal. And Let me ask you this. My words are telling discos what I think about Jesus. You know, I saw Jordan Smith sing it on The Voice, and I saw I have my subtitles I remember that. up, and my subtitles are up, and they every word was correct. It was Mary. He, he sang it correctly. Will not would. It should not be Mary. Did you know that your baby boy would one day? It's it should always be will one day walk on water. Whatever. Anyway, that's Buddy and our our little pet peeve. But <clears throat> <laughs> so I'm watching him, and I'm in my lazy boy, and it dawns on me, and I write him. I text him. I get his number from a fellow college friend, student friend of his. And I text him. I said, Jordan, thank you for allowing me to sit in my lazy boy and through you tell the world what I think about Jesus. Wow. Because 16 million people saw that that night. Wow. That's more than I'll ever stand in front of. <laughs> wow. That little ditty me and Buddy wrote. You know, there's been many times I've gone into a place and heard the song playing in the store or, uh, you know, somebody doing the song. And, and there was, I can't even remember where this was, but it was one of those grand old hotels. And it was Christmas season. I wish I could remember where this was, but it had just one of those grand places and it had a huge lobby and a massive Christmas tree in there. And there was a choir in there that was doing a, a, a concert, you know, standing wow. by the Christmas tree. And I, so I stood there and watched a little bit and then they did Mary, Did You Know? And I, I, I have always been so proud of and for both you guys, when I hear that song, I just there are some things that I that I watch or listen to that I think, man, that's a life's work, right there. I mean, when I, I see a particular film or I see hear a particular song, I think you know if you only do that, that's just a life's work right there. And I think this is just a. You guys have both done so much, and yet this <clears throat> song, I mean, you know, you, you you talk to people about Christmas music, and I, I want you to think, I mean, I, I cannot think of a song in my lifetime that has been added oh, yeah. seriously. Oh, yeah, I can. Oh, you can't. I mean, other than Grandma one got Mariah run over Carey by wrote. a reindeer. The what? one that Mariah Carey wrote. Came, she wrote it and released it the same year Mary Did You Know was released in What's 1991. Up? What's it called? See, uh, that's how well people know it. No, I, you know, I'm just telling you. Listening. Yeah, I, just, I know. I know. Well, but if you, <laughs> I know. And I kind of know what. for Christmas is you. Yeah, I know. But. If you say, Mary, did you know? I don't care if it's Christmas time or not. Everybody knows what you're talking about. Everybody knows what you're talking about. Hey, do you guys have a favorite version? You know, one of the things I want to do, we're going to add into the show notes. And I want to find out where people can contact both of you if you'd like to be contacted. But I, I, uh, I also want to add into this, to the show notes Several versions of the song, of people doing it. Do, do either of you have a favorite uh, that somebody did it and you think, I just love that? Buddy, you go first. <clears throat> well, there's some obvious ones that everybody knows out there. Like Pentatonics had a fantastic version four or five years ago. Yep, they did. And, um, I thought Clay Aiken had a great version of the song uh CeeLo Green did a fantastic version of the song and I was when I heard that CeeLo Green was doing it, I didn't even know who CeeLo was when 
when that came out seven or eight years ago, and somebody described him in the, and said, you know, I went looking for some of his music, and it was all kind of hip hop and oh yeah, <laughs> crazy hip hop Mary here, you know. And then he does this beautiful, beautiful version with a great orchestration, and he sings like an angel. Uh, but you know, one uh, the way I recorded it and the way it was written, it was more of a folk song. Michael English was the first person to record it. And he and his production team, they just immediately turned it into more of a pop sound of arrangement. And I remember when I heard that that's what they had done with it, I just was like, oh no, what have they done to our song? Are you and serious? I was, yeah, because I, I mean, I just thought, you know, because somebody said, oh yeah, man, we put kind of a little Phil Collins sort of thing on us. And oh, and, oh no, you know. Oh my gosh, that's funny. <laughs> finally played it for me I just loved it and the, because the first thing that popped in my mind was this is not a song that has to be stuck in any one style it's going to change you know, all these different styles and um and that's probably been the style the song the the version and performance that has informed more subsequent versions of that song Kenny Rogers and Winona and Winona version. yeah they came up with a little musical theme to set the melody up that was dun 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 so they had this little descending line that sets up this ascending line. Right. And it was brilliant. And so I'm really thankful for Michael English's probably is the top of my list. Absolutely. They just right away put that song on the map. You like it even more than the heavy metal version? Yeah. Okay. But God bless those guys. Uh, <laughs> Let me just tell you, Christine W. is the lady who does the uh, disco version, if y'all want to ever look it up. Okay. Christine W. But I have to say, the, the best sort of folk version of the song, um, is, in my book, is the, is the Isaacs. Um, their cover of that song is just gorgeous. That's what I, that, that was what I was going to say. I mean, you know, yeah. I mean, I don't know what Mark thinks, I, I love now. I, sh- I should I should let Mark answer before I answer. So, Mark, what do you think about uh, what's your favorite version? Favorite. Well, <clears throat> the Christ Church Choir is in my top, maybe number one, maybe number one. Christ Church Choir. Uh, it is so majestic. One. Christmas, I was going through uh, every, I just Googling it just to see where it was, was, what was happening with it, who was doing it. And I came upon the Christchurch choir and I just wept because it felt so majestic. It felt like it was part of a movie or something. And, and it was just, it moved me. Um, Natalie Cole did a pretty good job on her CD. Uh, Donnie Osmond, I enjoyed that one too. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Dolly Parton just did it. Oh, yeah. Uh, Dolly Parton just did it last night and on her Christmas CD. Dolly did. And let me tell you something. I watched on HBO Max Carrie Underwood's Christmas special, and there is more gospel in there. I mean, that last song, and I heard she wrote that last song. She just gives, it is unbelievable how she went under the water and under the blood and I've been saved by, I mean, it's unbelievable Wow! how much gospel she gets into a secular Christmas show. And she did Mary, did you know? And she made me believe she believed it. You know, I, I watched, the, and Dolly, I mean, Dolly Parton, she goes into some Holy Ghost praise fest at the end of it that Buddy and I did not write. And it's just her love of Jesus. These people love Jesus. And they're getting the gospel to people who will never listen to me or buddy. That's right. They're hauling the water to the desert while we're singing to the choir. (laughs) Wow. What a great way of putting it. It, Let me, let me uh, mention a couple of versions to you guys. Uh, One that I have and I hear regularly. And I'm going to put as a link on the show notes. Now, you guys probably, neither one of you even like this, but I have a version of you guys doing it together. I like that one. Of Buddy and Mark singing it. And 
What'd you say, Betty? I said, we, yeah, we did it one time, or at least it was videotaped one time, I think. Well, right. I have that on my, you know, on my iTunes. And I, that's when I had a mullet. Really? Well, I, you know, I just, I love it because there's something, there's something about the people who the song came through. They just deliver it differently. Yeah. It, you know, I mean, I mean, no, no offense. Neither one of you are a Natalie Cole. You know that. But to hear the the spirit come through that. Now, there's also one, Mark. What is the one that you did several years ago with the? It, it looked like maybe fourteen or eighteen people behind you, black and white. Oh, Voctive. Spell I did with that. Voctave, V O C T A V E. I think a, that that it's was an acapella awesome. group down there in Florida, and they asked me to come down there and do uh, do it with them. And I, then I look, I Googled them and saw how great they were. Well, that's and a so, great video. That's a, just yeah, I'd love to do that. Yeah, I have Sorry. to hold a note for like three days. Really? <laughs> he wrote and it I, that way. Yeah. But then I also I I agree with Buddy. I my very favorite version is is Sonia with the Isaacs singing that, yeah. and that also uh, you know coincidentally is my favorite Christmas album, the Isaacs yeah. Christmas. Every cut on that album is awesome. I like Christmas music. Well, and they're that, amazing. Yeah, they that amazing. is. But uh, and you know she had she went through. It seems to me like mamas can sing that song pretty well because mamas really get that song, you know, because they they've had their babies nurse at their breast and they've wondered what that child will become, you know. You know sure. they have, yeah. And uh, and you know what's interesting is there's recently been some people, uh, well, recent to me, I, mean, I don't know how long they've been upset about it, that don't like the song because they say I'm that I'm mansplaining. Have you ever heard of mansplaining? <sighs> well, anyway, they said I'm mansplaining. I said, but my feminine side wrote that. <laughs> Golly. <laughs> but there's, you know. There's... And, then, and then, well, one of them, I have to tell you this, I got bad. I, you know, I usually never respond to my critics because that gives them a platform. You don't sure. do that, right? Right. But I did was one time this mansplaining. I had to go look up mansplaining. I had no idea what I did. What does it mean? What does it mean? It means a man talking to a woman like she doesn't know, which like she's too dumb to understand what the angel just told her. And oh, so I'm God. there to explain it to her. Uh, do you think I thought that when I wrote that night when I was 26 years old? I'd never heard a mansplaining. And I thought, good. And, Anyway, but this one lady was going off, and I shouldn't have done this, but I, I just said, well, I wasn't asking you. That's all I said. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and you'd have thought I cussed everybody out. Man, they came after me like bloodthirsty hounds. And I did, I'm not the one who started it. They started picking on my little song. And I just said, well, I wasn't asking you. I was asking Mary. Besides, you were angel splaining. You were man. I was, I was angel. Yeah. I was man. Man. Oh my gosh! All right. Well, I know better than to ask you this, but I will anyway. Is there any version of it that you've heard that you were like, mm, "Wish they hadn't done that"? Oh, I'm sure I could find one. You know, but I don't look for that. Right. I don't know, buddy. Do you have one you hate? <laughs> <laughs> buddy, do you have one you hate? <laughs> One, one, <laughs> one. <laughs> no, I, you know, I mean, I have, I have less than favorites for sure, but I, I, I just appreciate that people do the song. Anybody. Yeah. 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 You know, I mean, we're, you're talking, you give us a lot of credit, Andy, in writing a song. Yeah. And, um, and, and I think that song, it holds up pretty well for a modern, you know, song, uh, you know, uh, uh, somebody, uh, uh, um, Somebody like a Cole Porter probably could come in and say, well, yeah, I mean, it's okay in some ways, but, you know, it's really not that great a song from, from a, you know, a really, from all the skill, you know, when you stack it up against Moon River or whatever. Oh, yeah. But the thing that makes that song great is Jesus. 
that song gets people to think about Jesus. Right. And you say that about all kinds of little, you know, even the little drummer boy. You know, it's about a drummer boy, but what's make what has captivated this drummer boy? This baby. Yeah. This baby. What does the what is the meaning of this child? I mean, that all that mystery, all that hope, all of the stuff that the world wants to believe in is they are wrapped up. He's the savior of the world. And I think, I mean, that's the beauty of Christmas. It rolls around every year and even hardened skeptics have to just shut up for a minute and let this good news go out again because the, the world just has this hope. <laughs> it's a hope that's built into us. It's, it's in our DNA. We were created with a longing yeah. that Jesus, you know, Jesus is the fulfillment of that. So, Preach, so I just, buddy. Yeah, I mean, it really is though. Don't you agree, Mark? I, I mean, what a good song. I do. I agree. I believe that little baby holds all things together, according to John 1. And if he were to cease to exist, our atoms would fly apart. He holds it all together. He created all things. That little child, that's the wonder of it. That in that eight-pound bundle, uttering unintelligible baby noises was the fullness of the Godhead. Yeah. Yeah, and, you know, the... Unbelievable. The, the thing about Christmas is it, it is, uh, and, and the whole Christ, Christmas message, you know, when you start exploring themes like incarnation and the mystery of the Godhead and the second person in the Trinity, I mean, these are mysteries that are too much, too, they're, they're too big for us to define and, and get into a box. And all you can really do is just let it, you know, uh, inspire the wonder that, that it does. Mm -hmm. At least for me. I mean, I'm speaking totally as a believer. I know there are plenty of skeptics that would wag their heads right now, but for those who... who but a baby they could relate to, right? I mean, all those things you're talking about are ethereal and wonderful to wrestle with, but everybody can relate to a baby. That's right. Yeah. And a baby came to redeem us. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's, it's why my earliest childhood memories of Christmas... I did not want Christmas Eve to go by unless, until we, I didn't want to go to bed until we had read this, the Luke 2 story. Right. Yeah, yeah, we did that too and did that with my boys. We had Jesus' birthday party every Christmas Eve. Oh. I wanted to hear those familiar words again and the wonder of those shepherds that were, you know, these, and I wasn't even thinking of them as the outcasts that they were, as the, you know, people marginalized in society which is the really beautiful part of their, um, their place in the story. Right. But they just held it, it all that, all that just um, every little element of that story in that little Luke two narrative appealed to my small little heart. And, um, and it always has. When I made my first Christmas album back in the late nineties, I had a, my daughter, my oldest daughter was 10 years old at the time. And we did, um, we did a little medley of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, and Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. And there was a little inter instrumental passage in there that I was going to fill with harmonica or something like that. And I thought, gosh, I wonder if I could get Aaron to come and, <laughs> and recite some of that Luke 2 passage. And uh, we worked on it, and she did. I listened to it the other day, her little 10-year-old voice. She's 32 now. And, but it's precious to me because it just reminded me of what I was like as a child and how much, uh, I mean, when you go, when you, when you watch the Charlie Brown Christmas special. Yeah. I was just thinking that Linus up to that moment when Linus is in it. Linus, it says yeah. Christmas is all about Charlie Brown and he reads that story. Right. And it's like, that's it. You don't need to say anything else. And you know, that's the end of this 30 minute special. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next guys, year. Yeah. You guys, thank you so much. I, I, I think this is, uh, I think people are going to really enjoy hearing this. And I, I have enjoyed just sitting back and listening to you guys talk and reminisce and talk about what it, this song means after all these years. And I, you know, this, this is something you were put on earth to do. And I appreciate the fact that you guys are who you are, that I, I know you, I know you behind the scenes, uh, you're 
hearts are as big as all outdoors yeah. and and that you love Jesus, you're not afraid to say it. And mm -hmm. you, you have done something special for the world while you're here. And yeah. I appreciate you both. Thank you, Andy. And thank you, Mark. For giving me a chance <laughs> for hanging on that lyric for seven years. <laughs> well, thank you, buddy, for writing an iconic melody. I think it's the Green Sleeves, uh, and I, I think, do too. and I, I thank too. God for you, buddy Green, and you are you are always special to me. I love that when you and I get together, we start talking about G. We barely say hello, you know. <laughs> You're one of those people, you Gloria. Uh, and a few others in my life, which like within seconds, we're talking about Jesus. What we're reading. He's always worth talking about. Let me tell you. Yeah. He's very interesting, isn't he? Very interesting. Yeah, he is. <laughs> all right. I Thank love you. you guys. Love you guys. Thank y'all so much. Thank you, Andy. God bless you and your family too. Give them our love. Okay. Merry Christmas. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I'm Andy Andrews, the professional noticer, harnessing common sense and wisdom to plow through challenges all the way to answers for you. And I think that'll do it for this week. Get us out of here, Matthew. So, ladies and gentlemen, and to the boys and girls who aspire to become ladies and gentlemen, we have reached the end of another episode of The Professional Noticer. In a world where common sense has become a superpower, I'm harnessing that tiny bit of mental energy I have for you, seeking wisdom, making observations, and endeavoring to answer tough questions in a way that will empower your family and your business. I'm Andy Andrews. Until next week, smile while you talk, even behind that mask. Don't breathe anyone else's air yet, but make sure you have a positive answer to the question, hey, how's it going? And so, until next week, goodbye. This episode of The Professional Noticer was produced by Matt Limpert. The Noticer theme, written and performed by Sugarcane Jane. Hot chocolate with marshmallows, provided by Twinkle and Smoke of Beverly Hills. Additional financial consideration provided by the Andy Andrews Holiday Music Collection. Yes, friends, the New York Times bestselling author has now put his hat in the ring as a Christmas carol songwriter and general songwriter of holiday music. Critics agree his talent is of monumental proportions. Mr. Andrews has CDs, downloads, and sheet music of his incredible holiday compositions, all songs he wrote by himself in his spare time. In this double album set, you'll receive Christmas carols like I'm Dreaming of a Hot Christmas, Pecans Roasting on an Open Stove, and his biggest hit of all, the multi-platinum Joseph Were You Aware. But Mr. Andrews has also covered the rest of the year with his other holiday classics. It's beginning to look a lot like Halloween. Have a holly jolly Veterans Day. I saw Mommy kissing the Easter Bunny, God rest ye merry Groundhog Day, and the now traditional St. Patrick's Day tune that became a number one smash for Johnny Mathis, My Funny Leprechaun. The entire collection can be yours by imagining it actually exists. That's the Andy Andrews Holiday Music Collection.